Hi, uh, JD here again. Um, apologies for the delay with this video. Um, I'm in the process of moving house, so I haven't had a lot of time to create a video for a couple of months. So I'm in a completely different location. Um, my shed's all packed up, ready for the move. Um, but I wanted to touch base with you to discuss something that I've been considering recently. Um, wrongly or rightly, I'm looking at changing my car again, um, and I'm actually considering a used Porsche or Porsche uh, 911 uh, PDK and I've also got a little dog here who keeps wanting to jump up so let's bring Gracie into the frame say hello Gracie um, so I'm going to try and do this without the dog barking um, so I'm actually looking at a I've been looking at 997s I can't afford a 991, but I've been considering, um, firstly, I was considering a 997 Gen 1, because you can pick those up for about 25 grand, at what we are now, January 2019, around that price, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on where you go, depending if you want a warranty and that kind of thing. But one thing that was kind of putting me off a little bit was the um, IMS bearing issue and also the, um, is it the RMS, some kind of seal or something? Um, and it kind of, and bore scoring, I think that's what it's called. I, I don't know a lot about it, but it was kind of putting me off. So then I started thinking about a Gen 2 car. Now, the Gen 2 car, um, I'm sure some of you know more than I do, um, was developed about 2008, had a completely new engine design, had a DFI, direct fuel injection engine. Um, and it, and I think from what I read, it's a lot more reliable. It's far more economical. Um, they also introduced the PDK gearbox in that model rather than the previous Tiptronic gearbox. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna see what's out there, see if I can get myself into a Gen 2 car. Now, obviously this is all about finance, as you know, um, and something that I just wanted to talk about was the fact that even um, Porsche dealers themselves, um, I've been looking at a, a car which is nine and a half years old, it's a Porsche approved car, but they seem to, find it a little bit tricky to get a residual value on the car when it's that kind of age. So I've also approached independent finance houses. I got in touch with the company who specialise in, in giving you third party finance um, on prestige cars. And I got a quote for um, a four year lease purchase. We haven't talked about lease purchase before, otherwise known as a HP with balloon. It's similar to a PCP. You have a balloon payment at the end, but the main difference is that balloon payment is not guaranteed. So that means that if they say give you a, a balloon value of fifteen thousand pounds in four years' time, and your car's worth eleven, you've got to basically either pay the car off and own it, or get rid of the car and also top up the outstanding finance. Thank you, Gracie. She's, do you want to see her play the piano? By the way, what is this? Very good. Come here, you. Oh my God. Come here. Right. Sorry, I digress. We carry on. Um, yeah, it's, so balloon with HP is basically the HP with balloon is the same, but that it's not a guaranteed amount. Now, is that a problem when you could voluntarily terminate anyway? Who knows? But it seems to be that if you go to a third party finance house, it's difficult to get a, a PCP. It tends to be either straight HP or HP with balloon. So I just want to go through a couple of figures because. As I've mentioned before, and I'll put a link up to it here, you can kind of make your own PCP or make your own HP with balloon using a personal loan. And I just wanted to kind of highlight the, the huge differences, certainly when buying an older car like this. So over to the screen, um, the car I was looking at, this wasn't the, I'll show you both actually. I was looking at a car at an independent Porsche specialist, and I'm also currently looking at a car at an approved uh, Porsche dealership. Um, so the one that at the independent specialist was £38,000. I'm going to try and work my keyboard without the dog falling off. Um, 13000 sorry, 38000 <laughs> Bear with me. Excuse the dog in the background. Um, so it was £38,000. Um, and I was going to put all of... I've got Mercedes E-Class. Oh, good, she's got off. I was going to put in my Mercedes E-Class as part exchange. 
which I think is roughly worth about £13,000. Now, I know I talk about not putting a big deposit in, but the only reason I'm putting this big deposit in is because there is no way I can afford the monthly payment anywhere, any, any other way. Okay, now the reason I've got so much money to put in is because I'm currently moving, I'm remortgaging the house, I'm able to pay off my Mercedes so I can kind of use that as a full deposit. Again, it might not be the best way of doing it, but I'm only paying 1.75% on the mortgage, so it's it works out cheaper in the long run than actually putting in a small deposit um, and running a higher loan on the car. So that was going to leave £25,000 to finance. Um, and they gave me, it's not a guaranteed future value, it's the balloon payment of £16,000. But the problem was the best rate they could get was 78 which is quite high, but probably compares with what you would get from a Porsche dealership. Um, and that comes out at a monthly payment of three twenty two eighty seven. So it's, you know, it's a... It's a manageable amount. It's far less than I've paid in the past. But just look at the total amount that we're going to end up paying for this car. 44392. Now, it's actually more than that because the 44392 only gets us to the balloon payment. So that's assuming that we're going to pay that £16,000 off. And where are we going to get £16,000 from? Unless we've saved it, highly unlikely in my case. So we've got to refinance again. So it's actually going to cost us even more. So I'm not sure about that because I don't know what I would do at the end. But that that kind of got me thinking, well, let's try to do a similar thing, but with a personal loan. Now, Sainsbury's Bank, Tesco Bank, AA Personal Loans, Zopa, various places out there, depending on your credit score, you can get as low as 2.8, 2.9, 3% APR. So let's assume that we could get 3% APR. Let's have a look at making our own, again, HP with balloon payment. Now, remember what I've talked about in the past. To do this, for it to work, you've got to choose a much longer term because otherwise you're going to have no balloon payment. And what we want to do is at, say, in this example, month 48, we want a settlement figure on this personal loan the same or less than the balloon payment or the guaranteed future value on a PCP. So what I'm going to do, same example again, £38,000, deposit of 13, so the loan amount is 25, and obviously because it's a straight loan, we've got no final value. Our APR is 3%, hopefully, if we can get it, but if we do it over 48 months, obviously our monthly payment rockets to £553 because we're paying that entire amount down over the 48 months. So our settlement at month 48 is zero. Okay, So that's not making your own balloon payment. So what we need to do is extend the term such that at month 48 we've got around about £16,000 so it compares with the balloon payment. And the dog is whining. So what I did, I say, okay, let's choose 84 months. So that's a seven-year loan. Now, you might be thinking, blimey, that's a long time to take a loan over. But it's not, because all we're doing is we're just deferring the settlement amount to month 48. So let's have a look what our settlement on the loan is when we've paid 48 payments. So we go down here, look. Now, look at how good this is. When we've paid 48 payments, if we could get this 3% rate using somewhere like Tesco Bank, our settlement would be 11412, give or take 50 quid, because the spreadsheet's not absolutely spot on. So we have made our own balloon payment. We've made our own HP with balloon, if you like. It's on a personal loan, so it doesn't have things like voluntary termination rights. But look how much it saved us. We would only have to find 11,000, let's say 11,500 after four years, rather than 16,000 with the balloon. And the monthly payment has only gone up a few pounds to £330 a month. But look how much it's cost us, even if we run it for 84 months, now, remember the other one was 48 months, and then we had to decide how we can get rid of that balloon payment. In this case, after seven years, we've paid it down completely, and it's cost us 
only £2,185 in interest to own the car outright. If we go back to what our other example was, so it was a guaranteed future value of 16000 and an APR of 7.8 and 48 months. So, yes, it's £8 a month less. Our balloon payment after... Wait for this to update. After month 49, look, 48, 16000 just over. But look how much it costs us in interest. £6,392. So a total amount to get to that balloon payment, not to have paid that balloon payment off, the total interest is £6,392. Because remember, on any kind of PCP or HP with balloon, you are charged interest on the balloon payment, whether you pay it off or not. So the problem with this is we've paid interest on that £16,000. We then come to month 49 and we've got to somehow, if we want to keep the car or pay the finance off, find £16,000. So the total cost of ownership, over, let's say, I suppose a good way of doing it would be to get to the 16000 and then borrow that £16,000, say, over three years. That will give us a total term of seven years, the same as my previous example. Let's try that just out of interest. So I get to month 49, I borrow £16,000 and again let's say we get the best rate, 3% and we do it over 36 months. So our monthly payment rockets because we've, we're have we trying to pay 16000 over three years but look, another £750 in interest and that's if we can get 3% APR. So if we wanted to pay that car off over seven years using the proper car financed HP with balloon for four years and then we took a loan out to pay the balloon over three years, so it's a seven year term in total, it's cost us £750 on the loan. Going back to the... Oh, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Hang on a minute, sorry. Going back to the original example, 38,000, deposit of 13,000... And guaranteed future value of 16,000, or sorry, balloon payment, not guaranteed. 7.8 APR over 48 months. 6,392 plus the 750. So to own that car in seven years, that way would have cost us 7,150. Whereas using the personal loan method over seven years at a 3% APR. Two thousand one hundred and eighty five in interest over seven years. One way of looking at it. I'm not sure which way I'm going to go yet. Um, but I just thought I'd, I thought it might make quite a nice, interesting video. Um, the other thing, while I'm on this topic, is gap cover. Now, what I have found, and I didn't realise, is that there are certain gap companies out there, certainly ones that I've used in the past, that will only offer gap cover for cars of seven years or younger. Now because this car is nine and a half years old, the company that I usually use for my gap cover won't offer cover, won't offer a policy. So I got a quote from Porsche themselves. For a four year term to cover return to invoice on a purchase price of £42,000 because it was a different car, believe it or not, was a thousand it was over a thousand pounds. I think it was a thousand and thirty-nine pounds. I found a company on the web called ALA, um, and you can find a discount code for it as well. And for the same kind of cover, twenty-five thousand pound claim limit, forty-eight months, three hundred and fourteen pounds. So there's a big difference there. But just be aware that if you are trying to finance older cars, a lot of gap cover companies out there won't offer you cover if it's more than seven years old. I'm sorry this was a little bit rambling. I'm trying to do it in a, in a different environment. I've set up the camera very quickly um, and I've got a dog in the way um, who's trying to get into shot. Um, so apologies for a little bit rambling. Um, but I hope that was an interesting example. Um, and I'll catch you next time. Please comment and subscribe. See you next time.